At One Rental at a Time, we are so lucky to have millionaires and contributors from across the investing landscape. Obviously, my depth is in residential landlording. But hey, uh, I don't know if you guys heard this, but we are in a brand new bull market in the stock market. Uh, we are up 50% from the bottom. So we've got the man who spent 10 years on Wall Street to talk about it. So uh, Taylor, we are officially in a bull market. If you believe the stats, what's going on? Rip, roaring, ready to go. Off to the races, baby. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter what the underlying economy looks like or the direction of things. Uh, the momentum is your friend on the tape right now. So get involved and, and you would have benefited had you done that so at the beginning of the year. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting one. So we could, we could certainly dive into it. Let's do it. Yeah, so I think uh, I saw a couple of things change last week. I don't know if this hits your radar. I don't know if I'm looking or if, sometimes I look for stuff and I reach and I feel like I'm only getting a tunnel vision of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, but if you were asking me about the stock market a week or two ago, I always said it's built on the back of seven stocks. What I saw last week was the Russell 2000 take off. In fact, I think the Russell 2000, one of those days, I think it was a week ago, Friday, was up roughly 3%. And NVIDIA it was flat. I'm like, yep. oh, that's interesting. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, is the is the market right? The four hundred and ninety three other stocks. You know, building up while the other seven stay uh, or what's going on, what are you seeing in the internals? Yeah, you didn't reach to, to find that. That is absolutely okay. something that's that's out there and, and it should be um, something that people are looking at because essentially the Russell 2000 are the, the 2000 small cap companies that are covered mm -hmm. in the public market. So think about a company that has a market cap between one and three billion. And for context as to how much that is, because numbers these days don't even make sense. They're so big. <laughs> think about Apple at two and a half trillion, right? So that's that's the difference in size that we're talking about here. And essentially, to Michael's point, he's, he's absolutely spot on. Essentially, seven to 10 companies have been what built the growth out of the S&P 500 and even more so the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ is heavier weighted towards tech and these are tech companies. So the NASDAQ's up. 35% this year, which is just bonkers. The s and right. up about 12%. And it's all on the backs of essentially seven companies. These seven companies, and I'll, I'll go through them real quick, are, are Meta, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Google. There's the seven of them. Nice and work. on average, yeah, I, I usually can't do that. Last week I tried to do that and I, I failed to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so on average though, they're up, uh, you know, day to day depends, but they're on average of about seven, seven to 83%, depending on what they're doing specifically today. That's the average of the seven of them. Seven to right. seven to 83% this year. We're talking about yeah. five months. When yeah, you year take to the day, average, crazy. When you take the average of the remaining companies in the S&P 500, the average return is negative. Yeah. So what Michael's saying is like, this is just a few companies carrying things along the way. So what had everyone, you know, had looked at and said, listen, this divergence probably can't continue. So it has to happen one of two things. Either the bottom end has to come up towards the top or the top has to come back towards the bottom. And what yeah. we saw last week, and, and Michael alluded to here, is the companies that haven't participated have now started to participate in short order. Yeah, this is where I was going with this because again, I'm I am a very nascent player in the markets. It's not my thing at all, right. Right. but I I like to try to get better in all areas. So one of the things that I see going on, and again, this I could be reaching here, is I, I I'm starting to sense we have buy the rumor, sell the news. What do I mean by that? I think we have Wall Wall Street participants, big money, getting into position for what I think will be a shockingly low CPI print and the Fed going on pause, which are things I've been talking about for months. It's just finally here. So I think the big money uh, was starting to rotate into these areas. And I think we're going to get what we get tomorrow as far as uh, CPI. And then we're going to get the Fed decision. Both things I've said for months are coming. And then I think we might get a sell off. It just feels like buy the rumor, sell the news is coming. But again, I could be wrong. It's interesting. I wake up uh, generally on Monday every week and I'm like, okay, is this the week? Is this the week that we get some normalcy? Is this the week that we get the market reacting to what the actual underlying fundamentals of these companies are? Or is this the week that again, valuations only matter in the long term. Valuations, right. there is no way to look at the market right now and not say it's incredibly expensive. And those seven right. names are even bananas expensive. So the market trades at like, 20 times earnings right now. So for every dollar worth of earnings, you're paying essentially $20 in the S&P 500. 
That is at a premium to historic average over the last 20 years. It's about 15, 16 on average. So you're trading at three or four dollars above the historic norm. And you look at those seven companies, they're trading at 95 times earnings right now. So they're trading at five times, you know, six, seven times the multiple of what the S&P on average has traded out historically. So there is no way to look at those companies and say these things are not overvalued. What they're doing is baking in an absurd amount of forward looking growth. But the thing is, the trend is your friend and the trend yeah. is higher right now. So I had a buddy that asked me like, hey, where does NVIDIA end the year at? And I said, man, I could easily give you a fundamental reason that numbers back that says it could be cut in half by 50 percent by the end of the year. And he's like, it will it be? And I'm like, man, I, I don't know because I have no I, idea. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense where it is right now, but that's where the momentum is just pushing it continuously yeah. higher. Yeah. No, again, I think Warren Buffett, and maybe he gets credit for quotes that aren't really his, but he's like, the market can remain irrational a lot longer than you can remain solvent, right? right. Something like that. So again, yeah. this is really and, interesting. And what that is, and so like we talk a lot on our social media, on Instagram, on TikTok about, hey, here's where the valuations are, this and that. And everyone's like, hey, you're, you're really negative. And, and I say to them, like, admittedly, I am. Over time, I think that the market yeah. needs to take a breather and come in a relatively significant amount. And they're like, okay, we'll go ahead and short it. And that's that comment. The market yeah, exactly. can remain rational longer than you can remain solvent. Because again, when you're shorting, you're exposing yourself to unlimited. Risk. Unlimited. Yeah. Unlimited. Yeah. Stocks can go to a million. Like, you know, not to say they are, but that is all of the downside that you can experience. When you're yeah. long a stock, it can only go to zero. You can only lose right. what you have invested there. But the market can remain irrational longer than you can make, remain solvent. I would have told you NVIDIA was overvalued three months ago. And yeah. Based on fundamentals, I would have been right. But that being said, this thing has continued to absolutely rip. Rip, yeah. So. yeah. And again, uh, something else we have this week that, again, I don't think the average participant knows about is we have options expiration. Yeah. I think is on Friday. Could you yep. just talk about what the setup might be? Because, again, I think there's a lot of pain to be had by market makers, right, that, that are set up the wrong way. So, so what, might, you know, what might transpire this week, you think? Yeah, essentially what, what – so this Friday is a day where what you have is – um, and I'm, I, I don't know the specifics. I think it's one month, three month, and, and, and essentially there are different time frames when you buy an option contract that it will expire. And once a quarter, what happens is those options contracts at different lengths all happen to expire yeah. on the same day. Right. That day is this Friday. So what that means is there can be a heck of a lot of movement either up or down based on these option contracts. So if they hit and the market's up, it can cause it to leg up even further and vice versa. If puts hit on the other side, it can cause it to gap down further. So it creates a lot of volatility in short order in the market all on one concentrated day, which is this Friday. So um, I'm not sure I answered your question there. I was trying to explain what, what the, you know, they call it quadruple witching. That's what yep. that is. Um, but it, let me, if I didn't answer your question, ask it again or tell me to rephrase. Yeah, just, just again, this, this seems to be one of those quadruple witchings where, again, I look at some of those max pain analysis where there's a lot of pain both on calls and puts. So it's, it's it, it, I don't think a lot of people saw this rip coming. And, yeah. and market makers specifically are set up to take some big losses, I think. Yeah. And you look at the volatility index, which is the VIX, and it is asleep on the mat. Like it is legitimately dead. It's at 13. Normalcy wow. is, is like 15 to 20. And that's in like normal environments that aren't scary, but they're, you know, normal environments. And I look at the economic backdrop right now and say, man, what you're seeing right now is the broad market telling you we are not going into recession. And um, it's hard to tell the market it's wrong because it's always right at that given point. Um, I tend to think that it is wrong. I tend to think that a, a recession is still coming um, based on a lot of economic data that I look at. But the market's saying it's not. And therefore, the VIX is subdued at 13. 20 is kind of that point of demarcation where you start to take notice of where the VIX is. And it is nowhere near that at this point. Yeah. It's really interesting to look at this. I, I think there was a Bloomberg article talked about this weekend. If, if the bond market is right, if the bond market is right, the stock markets have a 20% collapse coming or whatnot. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah. So I didn't see that particular article, but one of the things that they might be referencing there is the amount of inversion of the yield curve. So mm -hmm. the yield curve had gone out to a hundred basis points, one whole percent, and then wow. it skinny down significantly to about 40 basis points. And now all of a sudden you see it blowing back out. And why is it blowing back out? Because the market is now pricing in no Fed rate cuts this year. Whereas before they were, they were pricing in three Fed rate cuts. So the short end was really low. But as they start to go away from that, 
the two year treasury starts to arc, arc its way back up. Mm-hmm. And now there's 86 basis points, 0.86% spread between the two, which is historically really, really high. Yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be a very interesting week. Uh, we'll talk about inflation and CPI and the Fed in our next session. But uh, Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments. And we're on both Instagram and TikTok putting out daily stuff, trying to make finances simple. There you go, buddy. Thank you so much.